Good morning, everybody. 2021, Jesus Christ is still Lord today like he was yesterday, the day before, the day before. Nothing's new to him. He's same, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You understand that? Solidified, he doesn't move. He is who he is. Amen? That's security for us. That's our king. That's our stability. Amen. Philippians chapter three, please. Check out this. Paul is talking about knowing Christ. And just watch what he says. Verse 10, he says this. Um, he's talking about losing everything for the sake of Christ, counting everything but dung so that he may win Christ, right? And in that context, he says, so that I may know him, gnosko, that I may know him by experience, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, but watch this, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Unfortunately, that's more of a foreign topic for most Christians that I've come across in, in my path over the past 17 years of me walking with the Lord. He says, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. We all want to be like Jesus, right? We want to be like Jesus. Understand who he was. He was the one who endured the cross. The ridicule, the shame. He never saved face, right? Isaiah 53, right? His visage, his appearance was marred beyond recognition of a man. If he didn't try to save face, then why do we? Right? We have to look a certain way. A lot of us, we feel like that. We're connected to the world so deeply in so many areas that we don't know the fellowshipping with Christ in his sufferings. Listen, you got a short window, 70 years, 80 by strength, to fellowship with Christ in his sufferings. And then for all of eternity, that opportunity is then lost. You have a short window now to fellowship with Christ in his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Listen, it's the cross now and then the crown. We'll reign with him. Watch, turn with me real quick. Second Timothy. I'm going to try to be quick today. Listen, this should be encouraging to us to be able to get rid of stuff, to die to self mortify the deeds of the flesh and this doesn't happen by coming and making covet or uh, 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 covenants with covetousness and different things things of the world worldly mentalities sorry this might this might this might be painful for some but only momentary light afflictions that aren't worthy to be compared with the glory that'll be revealed in us you understand these things when we view life properly we're willing to lose out here so that we can gain there we can't keep anything here a fool builds bigger silos you see what i'm saying we need to get rid of cares of this life look at this in second timothy chapter two he says this he says you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of jesus christ but nobody no no one entangle engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life so that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You will endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. <laughs> if they did this to the to a green tree, what are they going to do to something that's dry? You know what? The servant is supposed to be better than the master? I don't like I just don't see that. Jesus in, in John 15, he says he says, they did this to me. You don't think they're going to do it to you? Look how they treated me. The world hated him. He says, the world hates you. The world is going to hate you because it hated me. And if we look like him, we're probably not going to be liked. We're probably not going to fit in. He says, woe, woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so they did the false prophets. Look at this. If you keep going in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he says this. Uh, chapter 3, I mean. In verse 10, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. <laughs> yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecutions. Listen, man, don't let this stuff touch you. Why are we so fickle? 
They're going to speak evil of you for my, for my name's sake. But leap for joy. Rejoice and leap for joy, for great is your reward in heaven. If we focus on things of the earth, we'll rejoice inappropriately and we'll be down inappropriately. The top of the mountain is going to be overly, right? And then the bottom of the mountain is going to be overly sorrowful, you know? We're not going to have a stability about us. Stuff's going to shake us because we still have, we have our lot in this life. We're priests unto God and the Levites had no inheritance in the land, but God was their inheritance. This is who we are now. See, we offer the sacrifice. He goes on in 2 Timothy in verse 11, in chapter 2, verse 11. Well, if he goes up, you know, he's talking about remember Jesus in verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Acts chapter 14, Paul gets stoned, left for dead, dragged out the city. He makes an escape by God's grace. That's one of the times God delivered him from these things. He makes an escape, goes and starts ministering the gospel elsewhere. And then he says, let's make our rounds back around to that. Right after that in Acts 14, he says, let's go back around. Look at it, turn there real quick. Acts 14. Right after he gets stoned, right? He comes in and he says this to him. In verse 21, he says, and when they had preached the gospel to that city, this is right after he was stoned in verse 19 and 20. It says that they preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples. They returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith. And this is how they encourage them. We must through many tribulations enter into the kingdom of God. We want it without it. We want the paycheck without the labor. <laughs> I don't want to be harsh. I'm not trying to be I'm passionate about this. Because this, I see so many Christians that are wobbling all over the place and they're hurt. Because they're connected to the earth. There's a reason that Jesus, when the disciples, they ran off and they started healing the sick and casting out demons. And they came back and they were rejoicing. So what's all that about? Even the demons are made subject. And they're rejoicing and smacking high fives. What does Jesus say? Yeah, that's good, boys. <laughs> Jesus says, rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Because there's going to come seven chapters later when you're going to try to cast this thing out and you're not going to do it because of your own belief and you're going to be wobbly. Your security in heaven is where we rejoice. Listen, 1633 of the book of John, Jesus says, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Understand this, man. Look at 1 John chapter 5. Understand this thing. This, If you get this, this will keep you from a whole lot of heartache. Set your mind on things above. When Paul's writing to the, to the Corinthian church in, second, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, he comes to the church and he says, and he says, I wish that, he says, you guys are running around like you're reigning already. You're running around like kings. We're over here suffering, getting beat up for the gospel, and you're over here living all lovely. He says, I wish you were reigning because if you were truly reigning, I would be reigning with you. <laughs> he says, you don't understand the cross first and then the crown. You're running around like you're, like you're some type of, you're exempt from this thing. For 2,000 years, the church has lived like this and all of a sudden you're exempt from it. Telling you, we got to get rid of stuff. He tells them later when he writes to the Corinthian church in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I think it's verse 12. 
He says, I'm not restraining you. I'm not restricting you. He says, you're restricted because of your affections. Your affections. I'm sorry, man. This is... Some of you might need to throw your TV sets in the world, in, in the garbage. Sorry. Some of you might need to delete your Facebook. Ouch. That's... I don't want to get too touchy. I don't want to touch too many... Too many things there. But look at this. 1 John chapter 5. Watch this. Listen, this is the inheritance of the saints, man. We get to follow after Christ and fellowship with him in his sufferings. What an honor. You notice that the disciples were rejoicing because the demons were made subject to them when they first got it. And he says, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And then in the book of Acts, what, what were they rejoicing about in the book of Acts? You come in in chapter 4, chapter 5, and ch chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. They were beaten and they were, they were beaten and they were threatened and they were kicked out. And it says that they left rejoicing because they were found worthy to suffer shame for his namesake. That's a foreign concept for many of us. America's, man, we're, we're living in the lab of luxury, man. Everything's pretty, everything's lovely. If the same things that are shaking the world and hurting the world or hurting you, you might be, you might be too closely connected. I love you. I'm not mad at you. I'm smiling. I'm happy on the inside. I'm passionate about this though because I see it day in, day out. Christians are hurt because they're living worldly. I'm not mad at you. First John chapter five. Look how he ends the book. Verse 20. Look at verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the son of God has come and has given us an understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols, amen? That's how he ends it. He says the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, the evil one. Chapter 2, verse 15, 16, 17. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. For the things that are in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It's all covetousness. It's all me. Lab of luxury type stuff. He says, none of that has anything to do with the Father. If the love of the world is in you like that and cares about that stuff, then the love of, the, love of God is not in you. He doesn't play around, doesn't mince words. How do you overcome this thing? If the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, and we're to be of good cheer because he's overcome the world. How do we walk that out? He starts the chapter out by that in John chapter, 1 John chapter 5. Look what he says. He says this in verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Faith. I, I got faith. I got faith, brother, but I'm still... Just because you say you have faith doesn't mean you have faith. Understand that, right? Faith without works is dead. Faith. Faith is something that you get from the word of God. If you misunderstand the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. If you misunderstand the word of God and you take it, the text out of context, guess what's going to happen to your faith? Illegitimate. So there's a whole lot of people running around talking about faith that don't have faith. Because you can't have faith if you, unless you have the backing of the word. And if you misunderstand the word, guess what you don't have? Faith is what you have when you take the action of believing what God has already promised. So if you misunderstand a promise, you don't have faith. Some people are going to be mad at me for this. I'm sure of it. But it's helpful. It's helpful. Trust me, it's helpful. You got questions, put them in the comments. Reach out to me. Everybody who watches this pretty much has my phone number. Give me a call. You don't have it. Reach out to Eric. Get my phone number. Text me. Call me. Whatever. We can go deeper into this. This is a 55-hour Bible study on this stuff. This is the whole New Testament. And we already went too late. So listen, be encouraged because he's overcome the world. He's overcome the world. We no longer need to be carnally minded and set our minds on things of the earth. We can disassociate ourselves from the things here. And we can live for another age. 
We can set our affections on things above, not things on the earth. And we can live in a whole different ecosystem, a whole different mentality, a whole different manner of life. Seeing that all these things are going to be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conduct? Are you kidding me? It's all going to be burned up. It's going to be rolled up like a scroll. It's going to be done away with. Listen, I don't want to be overly harsh. I might even re-record this. No, I'm not going to re-record it. It's already late and I got to post it. But I'm serious. Start thinking about this stuff. See what needs to go and let it go. It's not helping you. Amen. I love you guys, man. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Jesus Christ is Lord 2021. Let's go get it. Let's live this thing out for real. Let's put feet to this thing, man. Let's know him through his word and let's go after him and let's be like him. Servants of the Most High. I don't want to just be called a servant and then get upset when somebody treats me like one. We got to reign like servants and serve like kings. So let's go ahead and do this thing. Amen. Amen.